a hold down man, suitcase this, my cell phone, I'ma charge it on walk with a limp, get it knocked off or missing, you gon' get it, next time I see you ass, you gon' lose airlift. Y'all you already know man, K-Frog TV back in the building man, y'all go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, make sure you hit that notification bell so you can see it first, alright, so, you know, for the most part, I ain't really been dropping videos like that, I got a lot of shit going on out here in my personal life, you feel me, but um, anyways, I'ma get right into this one, you feel me, I wanted to go ahead and speak on a certain individual that I was locked up with, at Calhoun CI in the Panhandle on Bluntstown, Florida. A lot of people been wanting to know, you know, who was the hardest bumping person I've ever seen or the most craziest inmate or whatever. So I'm gonna break it down. And this one, I'm gonna speak on this inmate I was locked up with. His name was Grip, you feel me? He was from Jacksonville, he was a cutthroat, you feel me? The most bumping inmate I ever seen out of my whole time locked up was a cutthroat from Jacksonville, Florida. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was just something about him. He was totally different than, you know, he stood out compared to... Now, I done seen plenty of people that were bumping in prison. Don't get me wrong now. There's people everywhere that bump. You know, there's... there's the, every single gang has certain individuals that are bumping, that are gridding, you know. But I ain't never seen an inmate bump like Grip. And what I mean by that is he was so swift. Like, for people who don't know what swift means... You know, you're going to have to look into it, I guess. You feel me? It's to where, like, you know, they're just so swift where you can't even touch them. You know, like, they'll be all up. They'll switch sides all in front of you. They'll drop down, hit the wall. They'll touch the, the I mean, the floor. They'll touch the wall. They'll do all types of shit, you know, and, and, and it's all about being swift. And that's exactly what this person was. But not only by him being swift, Grip was beating people's asses, man. Now... I remember one time in particular, we was in H dorm at Calhoun. It was a butterfly building. I mean, a T building. I was in a T building at H dorm. And um, Grit was one of them type of dudes, like, it was just in him to where, like, he could work out for, like, a week and it would show. So he'd be over there in the cell or whatever. And, you know, he would, he would, he would be working out with the locker. He'd get all big and cut up and ripe. And he was the only one on the compound at the time that had a red G-Shock watch. Feel me? Only one in the compound that had a red watch. You feel me? And um, so uh, one day we're in there, we're all just vibing and shit like that. And I met him through another cutthroat named Jr. When I was in C dorm. You feel me? I was in the kitchen dorm at Calhoun, and then I went to confinement. He came to confinement two days after me. You feel me? And we met in there, whatever. You know, he needed some cigarettes when he first got there. I said, Yeah, I can get him. Boom, boom, boom. We know we did our little thing, and then we just started vibing with each other, and we both were just, like, smoking shit, you know, hang out and shit. So, we only vibed for, like, two days, and then I went to the confinement for 60 because of a cell phone. And then he came back there a couple days later. Now, me and him ended up getting out of confinement, though. 60 days, he got out two days early, you feel me? When he came in two days after me, we got out of our 60 the same day. So, when we got out, we both got put in H dorm. He got put in one quad. I mean, I got put in H1. He got put in quad three, I believe. Yeah, he was in quad three. I was in quad one. But so we had to meet up and go to um, ICT together, which means we're going to go there. They're going to give us our job transcripts. Tell us, you know, tell us what it is that we got to do, where we're going to be placed, what it is we're doing. You know, like as far as working in the kitchen, inside grounds, outside grounds, the library, laundry, chapel, depends on what they tell you, you know. So when we go there or whatever. He like, what's up, fraud? What's happening? I'm like, what's up, bitch? He was like, shit. He like, he like, what's up? How you like your quad over there? I said, it is what it is. You feel me? I mean, shit, I'm finna get tattling and everything. He was like, yeah. He like, I like my shit. I said, yeah. He like, hell yeah. He like, that shit live. Why I like it over there? I said, yeah. He like, it's way better than C dorm. I said, I said, yeah. I said, you know, I got to get used to being behind the door though. You feel me? But I was used to it from confinement. But this was like living behind the door. And he was like, um, he like, yeah, yeah. He like, nah, I like that shit. You feel me? And anyone who knows Grip, he had a different name also at a different compound on his bid before this named Junkie Jit. You feel me? And he just, he, he, he was just known. You feel me? Anyone from Jacksonville vouched for him. They knew about him, you know. And, um, so he had a name for himself already. So this wasn't his first bid when I ran into him. Now, me and him got real, real close while being in confinement because he was across from me. So we used to sign each other all day. You feel me? Sign language shit. You know, he shoot shit to my cell. I shoot shit to his cell. You know, we was in there vibing. So, and I didn't know at the time how dangerous of an inmate he was. You feel me? I didn't know he was who he was. You feel me? I just thought he was just another inmate. You feel me? So, um, he like, yeah, yeah, I like my shit. You feel me? 
I'm like, yeah, he like, yeah, yeah, I like it over there. It's way better than C dorm. So I'm like, that real now. So uh next thing you know, he like, yeah, yeah, you feel me? And he shows me his hands, and his fucking hands are all swollen and busted open and split open all over his hands. So I'm thinking like, damn, dog, man. I'm like, yeah, you bust someone already? He like, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. So I'm like, that real now. So then I run into one of my dogs in my dorm that has brothers that's over there with grip. And he come in there talking about, boy, that cutthroat over there, boy, painting shit. And I'm like, ooh. He like, boy, right there with the red G. Oh, they, 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 red watch. Hey, red watch. The one with red watch. I said, nah. I said, I said, yeah, yeah, that my dog grip. He like, man, that nigga just beat the shit out of like six people over there, bro. I said, nah. He like, yeah, bro. He gets like a hype of that shit, bro. So I said, nah. He like, yeah. He like, that nigga. And dog, I swore on everything, bro. Like, he was so excited to be there, bro. Like, to him, that's exciting. Cause, and, and, uh, he told me in Jacksonville jail, you know, they don't even have a TV, you feel me? They don't even have a radio and shit like that. All they do is fight in Jacksonville jail, you feel me? So shout out to them cutthroats out there, you feel me? I know some savages, you feel me? You feel me? So next thing you know, I'm like, yeah. He like, yeah, man, he beat the shit out of like six people last night, dog. Like he the type like two different gangs will fight and he'll get involved and beat up both of them and shit like that. So I'm like, damn. He like, yeah, any he robbed a nigga for a phone. I said, that real, nah? So then I see him on the rec yard. He like, fro, what's up, what's happening? I'm like, shit, same old shit. He like, yeah, you already know, bitch. He like, man, I had to bust this shit, dog. You feel me? The nigga know what time it is. I said, no, nah, what happened? He like, oh, as soon as I walked to my dorm, you feel me? He like, as soon as I walked to my dorm, you know, there was there was like six, seven niggas in my, in my cell. My cell was the smoke room where everybody was hanging out shit. So, you feel me? I walked in there. And them niggas ain't want to let me make my bed. They ain't clear out or nothing. They just sat in there like I had to move, work my way around them. So I set my shit down. And I didn't even make my bed right away. I didn't even say shit to my bunkie. I just waited, you feel me? And then right after, as soon as they called lockdown, I painted my bunkie to let them know what time it is. And then I went over there and I told all the niggas that was in my room. I seen what cell they went to. And I told them, hey, nigga, you might as well tighten me up. Tighten me up. Tighten me up. You know, like I'm on some, you know, institutionalized shit. It's respect. So I'm like, yeah, he like, yeah, bro. So I busted like five of them niggas. First day, like at first, like we went to ICT the next day and his shit was all busted up. He busted them boys his first day in the dorm. Now I'm going to tell you a situation when I seen him bust some shit. All right, so he came into my quad. He would literally come in my quad and everyone would start acting all spook and shit like that. And he'd come pull up on me, oh, what's up, bitch? I'd be like, what's up? And we'd be standing on the top tier and he would just stand there and look around. And just look look at different niggas and shit like that. Like, and just observe the whole quad. You feel me? And people are like, damn, bro. So people want to look like they friendly with me now in front of Grip. Like, they be like, bro, boy, what's up? You feel me? Like, so thinking that Grip will spare them on my face. You feel me? Because he was my dog. And my cell was all the way in the back of the, all the way in the back of the, the, the quad. Up the stairs, the very corner room on the left. And I didn't have a bonus. And I came in there with $100 worth of canteen, fresh out of confinement. And ain't no one tried to try me or rob me or none of this shit. You feel me? And then, um, but people were getting robbed daily in my quad. You feel me? But they respected me. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, he don't have a bunkie or nothing. And he came in here with his own shit. He'd walk around with his shirt off. You know, I just carried myself different. So, he in there one day vibing with me and shit on the top tier, just chilling. Boom, just looking over and shit like that. And then he start, he start, he start finding people to rob. You feel me? See, he, he like, he like, man, niggas ain't here, man, they ain't. He like, man, ain't nothing to rob in my dorm, dog. He like, I already done robbed all them boys. He was the type to like rob people and go to sleep, which is very deadly. You can get killed like that. Robbing someone in your same quad and then going to sleep, someone will come in there and kill you. You feel me? Especially in prison, you feel me? So he in there, whatever, he like, yeah, yeah, you feel me? I gotta just, I gotta go see who I'ma rob over, you feel me? So he go up to some Zoe, you feel me? And um, the Zoe, the Zoe, like it's in his room sleep. He go right inside the Zoe room, sit down on the locker, dead ass in front of him, and start putting this dude's brand new Reeboks on. So the Zoe in there sleep, when he opened his eye, look, man, what the fuck? He split them. Boom, boom, boom. He start whooping. He start whooping this Zoe like another gang member, you feel me? He start whooping this Zoe, beat the shit out of him, and told him, boy, these my shoes, nigga. This is what's happening. This is what time it is, you feel me? Like, 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 and then, like, the Zoes want to beef with the cutthroats. You know, about four or five of them came over there like they were going to do something to grip or whatever. And he was just sitting there laughing in the middle of the dorm. Like, nigga, it is how I'm living. Nigga, it is how I'm living. Like, and anyone who knows him before this prison shit, like, knows grip. Like I said, he had a different name. You feel me? He junkie jit. And then they probably know him as something else on the streets. But 
they called him Chunky Jit because he'd find out at his last camp or in his last bid, he'd find out who had that tunchi and who had that that shit and he'd come get it. He coming for it. You know, I seen it with my own eyes. I ended up getting put back in C dorm afterwards. I got put in the kitchen and got put back in the C dorm. Well, I went to uh first I called a DR or whatever and shit for tattoos and shit, went to confinement, got out and got put back in C dorm. When I got put in C dorm, that boy slid over there early in the morning with a banger on him and just leaned up against the wall because it was open bay. When you walk inside, you know, you got a wall with all the bumps. He leaned against that bit with his banger on him, talking about, boy, what's up, man? Who over here got it? Boy, I heard they got that twack over here. Boy, I heard they got that. You know, like he was literally on that savagely robbing shit, you know? And anyone who knows of him before this knows him from being locked up. They'd always know him from the program, from the county. Anyone to tell you, yeah, I know him from being locked up. All the people from Jacksonville, they know him from being locked up. You feel me? So that boy right there was the, was the, was the God honest, the most bumping inmate I seen bumping in the Florida Department of Corrections. Now, don't get me wrong. There's probably people out there that whoop him. There's, you know, not saying he's the hardest one in the world, but I'm letting you know from my perspective and from the five years I was in there, he was the most bumper one I seen. So then after he did this shit to the Haitian or whatever, I mean the zoo, and he took and he took his shoes and shit like that, he stayed there and he, each movement after like count time and shit, when they opened the pound again, he'd slide back into my quad and there'd be like six, seven zoos in there. And anyway, he'd come in there dolo. Like he didn't even listen to his own brothers. You know what I'm saying? Like he'd take his own brother's shit. You know, that's how he was. He was like, he was a savage. He was a cutthroat for real. He cutthroat his own brothers and shit like that. You feel me? And, um... It just was like, like for like three weeks at a time, bro. Like he'd be he'd be beating people up for like he'd fight two people today, and then tomorrow he'd get in, he'd go across the compound, and he'd beat up and rob someone and take their shit, and then the next, and then he'd come back down to our side, and then he'd be in here selling it, smoking it, doing whatever he's got to do, and then the next day he'd go down there and fight two more people in the rec yard. Like he was just known for bumping, and when I, I'm talking about boy, that boy's hands were so big, you know, he don't look like it from his mug shot and shit like that. Feel me? I don't even know if he's gonna see this shit or not, but shout out to him, you feel me? And uh I ain't wanna put his real name out there because he's still locked up, you feel me? But that man right there was gritting. I'm talking about after he beat them fucking five, six people up that, that didn't let him make his bed when he came in. Like that right there made him like you see in the 60 days in how they got uh a pod boss. That made him the pod boss. Like he ran his quad. After they after they seen he did that. He ran his quad, and then from there on out, it was like he was the main, he was the, the, the main, you know, like, out of the cutthroats, he was the one that, like, was the main threat, you know, like, he didn't give a damn what gang he was in, if he wanted what you had, he's taking your shit, and I guess he just fought with me, because I kept it real with him when we did box time together, you feel me, so, like, Another time, I seen him get in an argument and they were playing football out there on the rec yard and, and him and some other people were playing football and he was the quarterback. And he ended up getting an argument over the shit like that. And he's like, man, you ain't saying nothing. He like, nigga, I'll beat you and all your brothers up. He ain't saying nothing. I'll beat you and all your brothers up. Nigga, I'll beat your whole team up right now. I'll beat your whole team up right now. Nigga, what's up? Which one y'all want to get? And he called out the whole team they were playing against and none of them he's like man get up under the pavilion right now get up under the pavilion right now any one of you niggas step up on this and then he was and then he and then he took his shirt off and then he t and then uh none of them wanted to get in the paint with him a whole football team and then when he told him he said man you niggas better not even step up on this pavilion the whole time there was wreck all them people that were playing against them in football none of them stepped near that pavilion and he sat under the pavilion he's like boy any one of you niggas come near the pavilion i'm gonna knock you and they didn't the boy stayed out there in the sun like, boy, that is one a person I can say, boy, that was beating the shit out of people, you know? And he and he worked out with the locker. He filled that locker up with books and shit, and he later and he worked out with it and shit. His last bit, he caught seven, you know? Now, don't get me wrong. I done seen some bumping Haitians and, and shit like that, you know, different different gang, couple bloods that were gridding too. You feel me? Like, I ain't doubting no one or I ain't putting no one down and giving no one any more, you know, credit than they deserve. I'm just giving credit where credit's due, you feel me? So, his name was Grip. You feel me? That boy finna come home in 2022. He almost home, you feel me? But that right there is the person that I seen bumping the most out of all the gangs in the Florida State Prison was Grip. He was cutthroat. You feel me? But um, anyways, for the most part, you know, I just wanted to break that down to the most bumping inmate I seen out of my whole prison bid. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, he'll square off with you. He'll switch sides. He'll throw that bitch from here to here. 
He'll touch the wall. He'll drop on the ground and hit you in your shit and then run backwards on the floor and get up and shit. And he'll, he'll just, it's called swift. He was being swift. If anyone's been to prison, they know there's some swift ass people out there. There's some swift ass people, which is like they ride the wall. They'll put their back on the wall and they won't even move. They'll just ride the wall. And as you're swinging on them, they're weaving you. They're weaving your shit with their back on the wall. And shit, like, it's just crazy as hell. But uh, shout out to Griff. Free that boy. Free all the real people in the chain gang. Like I said, I've had a lot of shit going on lately in my personal life. So I ain't been on here like that. But I appreciate everyone that's still rocking with me. You already know that volume three finna drop soon. I just want to get a couple more videos out there before I push it. Um, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Until next time, man. You already know this. Okay,